Hello, this is Diane Dalton. I'm going to step through completing the found dog flyer that is in the Shelley Cashman series book on Microsoft Office 2010. It is in Word Chapter 1. First of all, I'll give you a brief overview of Microsoft Word. It is one of the application programs that's in the Microsoft Office suite. It's used for word processing. The ribbon contains commands that you use for formatting text. The ribbon is organized into several tabs. The Home tab contains the most commonly used commands. There's an Insert tab. There's the Page Layout tab, References, Mailings, Review, View, and yours probably will not have the Developer tab as well. From the Home tab, um, this is the one we're going to typically use. So I'm going to begin by entering text. Flashing vertical bar that you see is called the insertion point. That's where the text is going to go that you start typing. So I'll begin by typing in the text that we're going to use. I'll type it all in and then we'll go back and format it to make it look like we want it. So found dog. I press the enter key to make the text go to the next line. Adorable, loving, Okay, I have completed typing this data in, and one of the first things I want to point out to you is this word down here has a red wavy underline. You can see it says C-O-L-A-R, and that's because that is a spelling error. So Word will point out your spelling errors for you. There's several ways to fix that. If you know what the word was supposed to be, you can just go in and correct the spelling yourself. You can also double click on the word right click on your mouse and look at some suggestions. So these are words that are spelled close to the word that was misspelled. And I know that the word was supposed to be collar, C-O-L-L-A-R. Okay, so that's one way to correct. Another thing to point out to you is as I was typing this sentence, the or adorable, loving, friendly, well-behaved dog, I didn't put a enter key here to make this go to the next line. As you keep typing, Word will automatically wrap it to the next line when it runs out of space. That's called the Word Wrap feature. If you want a line to start as a new line, then you can press the Enter key and it will become a new paragraph. That's the distinction. And I also see another typing error, which is not highlighted because I made a mistake and made it a correct word. So it should be mail, M-A-L-E. Right, if you want to see where your Enter key has been pressed, you can use this formatting button. It's called the formatting marks. You press it once to show and another time to hide. So you can see every place where this formatting mark, that's a paragraph mark, shows up. I've ended that paragraph and started a new one. Okay, so each of these is considered a new paragraph. And to get rid of those marks, I can turn them off. They're only showing the, the hidden formatting that is put into the document. All right, so we're going to start by working with the headline, and that would be like the title of the flyer, the word found dog. So to select that, I'm going to take my pointer, I'm going to click and hold down and drag across, that selects all of that. And now I want to format it. One of the first things I want to do is to center it. To center things, you do that in this area, it's called the paragraph area. This is the centering command. As I hover over that, you can see the key tips, it says center, that will center your text. So I'll click that once, and now it's centered. Well, I also want to make this much larger. So I can go to the font group, and that's going to change what the font looks like. The font is the style of the letters. I want to make it much bigger. This is the size. So as you can see, I'm going down, I'm going to make it 72. I also want to change the style a little bit. I'm going to make this Arial Rounded MT Bold. This is a style of font. And you can see as you drag your pointer through here before I select any of these, you can see what the preview is going to look like. And the one for this exercise is Arial Rounded MT Bold. Okay, so that's getting closer to what we want. Now if you see this 
blue background shading. That just indicates that it's selected. If I click somewhere else in my document, you can see that blue shading is not there. All right, so I'm going to select again. That's what the blue shading indicates. And what I'm going to do is add some color to the background. And that is done again in the paragraph, and this is called shading. So what I'm going to do is actually put color that's going to stay with this, with this title. And the color I'm going to use is this orange accent 6, darker 50%. And you can see as I hover my mouse over it, the name of that color appears. So I'm going to click on that. And now when I select out of there, you can see that I have that highlight on the words found dog. Now another thing I want to do is change the text style. I'm going to make it look a little bit fancier. And this is called a text effect. Again, it changes how the font looks, so it's in this font group. And this is the text effects, the blue A. And the one I'm going to pick is called text effect fill white gradient outline accent 1. So you can look through the list of names as they pop up here. So I need to hover over here again. And that's the one I'm looking for, fill white gradient outline. And that gives it a blue outline with a white interior. The interior is called the fill. I'm going to select this text and again, I just used my pointer and I clicked before the word adorable and then I dragged it down to the bottom while holding and then I released. So by selecting this, this is the text that I am going to format. And what I want to do to this part is I want to make the font bigger. I'm going to make it a size 22. I want to make sure it's Calibri and it is. All right, that's good. That's all I need to do with that one. Now, the next three lines, I'm also going to make those larger. And those are going to be 24. And these are going to be what's called a bullet list. A bullet list um, helps to highlight specific lines of text. And this is how you do this. You can see it's multiple lines with a little bullet. That's what the uh, dot is from. These are considered a, a bullet. All right, so that created the bullet list. Now I'm going to do a little bit more to highlight even more of the text. I'm going to select the word Bailey. That's the name of the dog. And we're going to apply an italic style to it. All right, that's the slanted text. I'm also going to give it some color. To change the color of the font, instead of using the automatic font color, you can select the A with the color underline and I'm going to pick one of these colors. Now, this group of colors across the top, these are called your theme colors. And I'll show you in a little bit how we change those color themes. But the last six are considered accent color one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that one's orange accent six. And what we're going to do is blue accent one, darker 25%. Now we're going to move on to the last line of the flyer. And what we're going to do is we're going to make that bold. Again, that helps to highlight the text. We're going to make it larger at 28. And we're also going to center it. To highlight it a little bit more, we're going to underline the words call. And that's the U with the underline. That's how you do that. Now we're to the point that we've made the fonts large enough that we can't see all of our document at one time. This is a zoom bar down at the bottom. It's in the status bar. It's in the lower right hand corner. You can see the plus and the minus. So what I'm going to do is click the minus a few times to zoom out until I can see more of my document. Now I still need to put in pictures because we have pictures of this found dog. I'm going to press enter once to give myself a, a place to enter those pictures. And then I'll put my pointer, my insertion point, on that blank line. And now what I want to do is add some pictures to my document. So I'm going to go to the word insert, picture. You should have downloaded these files now from the website, but you would have uh, some word files 
and in Word under Chapter 1, you'll find the dog picture, dog picture 1 and dog picture 2. Now there's different ways for looking at your pictures and this will work even when you're searching to try and insert something and it's called the view button. You can change and view these as icons or as thumbnails. So this is now a thumbnail picture where it shows a very small version of the picture. So I'm going to first select dog picture 1 and insert that. Well, now that's much bigger than I want it to be in the document. What you have around the picture are called sizing handles. So as you see when I put my pointer over one of the sizing handles on the corner it turns to a two-sided arrow. I'm going to press the mouse key and drag inwards and as it resizes it also repositions it. I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller. Okay, so there I've entered one dog picture. Now I'm going to put my insertion point right next to it. So I just click to the right and you can see the vertical bar here and I'm going to go insert a picture again. And this time I'm going to use the dog picture too. And insert. And once again it comes in much larger than I need. Now I can resize it from any one of the corners so I'm going to go to the lower right. And if I adjust it just a little bit more, I'll get it just about the right size, exact same size as the other one. Now, if you want to do exact sizing of your pictures, you can click on it. And what you see is it's a new Picture Tools Format tab. And in the upper right, it has the exact size. So my left picture is 3.07 inches high and 3.04 inches wide. My other dog is 3.08 inches high and 3.07 wide. So what I could do is type in here and make them each exactly 3 inches by 3 inches. So I've just changed the height and width of that one. And normally you don't change the height and width independently because you want to keep the proportions correct, but the uh, difference in those was so minor. All right. So now the next thing we're going to do to format this dog picture is to apply a style to it. Again, from the Format tab, there's some quick styles. If your screen is maximized, you might have these commands spread out a little better. Uh, mine is minimized for making this recording. But the quick styles is a, shows a gallery of different picture styles. And the one we're going to use for this is the soft edge rectangle. And I click that and you can see how it softens the edge of that dog. And I'm going to do the same thing to this picture from the Format tab, the Quick Style. I'm going to use the Soft Edge Rectangle Style and it's there. Now going back to the left dog. Another thing to add, we're going to add some picture effects. Those are also in the Picture Styles. There's several categories of picture effects. The one I'm going to look at right now is the glow, and that gives a little bit of color coming from behind. I'm going to pick the orange five-point glow. You can see how that affects the picture. And I'll do the exact same thing. I select the picture first. Only when you have a picture selected do you get the picture tools. And the picture effects, the glow, and I'm going to click over here and we get the glow effect. Now the last thing to make these pictures look just like the example in the textbook something called a 3D effect. Once again select the picture, go to the picture effects, the 3D rotation, these are different ro rotations, and the one in the textbook is called off axis one right, and we're going to pick the other picture, again picture effects, the 3D rotation, and this time it is the off axis to left. That gives you the two pictures together formatted as in the book. Now that we have pictures in here we can see even less of our document so I'm going to zoom out a little more and look what's happened. The last statement has gone to a second page. 
Well, I don't want that to happen. I want a flyer to all be on the same page. Things you can do to correct it and make everything fit on one page, you can change the font size of anything, or you can say change the picture size. In this case, I'm just going to take I'm going to take this group of letters and I'm going to make the fonts 22. Well, that wasn't enough of a change. So I can take my found dog heading, that's at 72. I can make that 48, and that was enough, certainly, to make it smaller. If I decided I didn't want to change my heading size, I could undo that. That's the left arrow that will undo the last formatting that I had done. So I've put this back to my larger font, and instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink my pictures a little bit. Even though they've already been sized carefully, I'm going to take them from the edge, I'm going to shrink it. Now until I do both of them, it's probably not going to have an impact on where this line shows. Okay, So by adjusting these pictures, making them a little bit smaller, gave me just enough space to get my lost dog phone number on here. Now I can also see that I didn't center these pictures. Right, so I want the pictures to be centered on the page, left to right, between the left margin and the right margin. And just like centering text, like we did with the title, I can center pictures using the center button. And that just shifts them over a little bit. The last formatting to add to our page is called a page border. And we're going to find that on the Page Layout tab. Okay. In the middle of the page, there's a group called Page Borders. This is a dialog box where you can select different types of borders. What we're going to do is a box border, means it's going to go all the way around the, t the page. We're going to pick a style here. So this is the line style. Could be a solid line, dashed, could have different dash patterns. So I'm going to pick this dash pattern. And the example in the book has it, instead of the automatic black, it's going to be a green color. Okay, so I'm picking the olive green. And the width indicates how wide that line is. So I'm going to make it a little wider so it's a little bit more visible. Make it one and a half point. Right, so that's how you put in a page border. I'm going to click OK. And you see it. That page border gets applied to every page in the document. So even though our page 2 is blank, it's showing it with a page border. If I put my insertion point over here on page 2 and backspace, get rid of that extra blank line that was there. Now I don't have page two. All right, so that's my flyer. It's complete. Now, I did mention color themes. You can change those. And right here while we're on the page layout tab, you can see there's themes and then there's color themes. All right. I'm going to look at the color themes. And as I, I've been using the default office theme, but as I scroll through here, and you can see a little bit of my flyer still, you can see how the different colors change. So these are different color groups that have been put together and named. And so where we were using accents number one through six, this is changing those accent colors as a group. All right? And there, each of these are named picking newsprint. So you can see how that changes the whole color scheme of your document. I could pick one that's got a very blue and greenish theme. And that's a whole different look. And I'm going to put that back to the default office theme. Every time you do an assignment for this class, I want you to remember to do this next step. You're going to go to click on the File tab. And over on the far right, under this little thumbnail of your document is the Properties tab. We're going to click the down arrow and the Show Document Panel. And what this shows is some of the information that's available. And this information is stored with your document, but it's not displayed. What you want to do is always put in your author's name, first name, and your last name. You can put in the title and the subject. I'm going to ask you to always put in keywords. 
and keywords are used if you ever want to search for something based on the subject of the document and not necessarily the title. So in this case I'm going to make the keywords be a found dog and I'm going to put in Cocker Spaniel. Right. So if somebody were trying to search for Cocker Spaniel they might find this document as well. So that's how you put in author's name and keywords. Now you're going to close that document information panel using this gray X. Now the information is saved and it will be saved with the document but it's not displaying anywhere here. So I can go back to the Home tab. Now I can zoom back in so you can see things in more detail and this scroll bar lets you scroll up and down within your document. Okay, when you're ready to save your document, you're going to go to File, Save As, and this is where you select where you're going to save it, what you're going to name it, and make sure it's the right type. I'm going to open the Word folder, I'm going to open the Chapter 1 folder, and I'm going to save this. And my standard is I want you to always put your last name in with the topic of the file. So Dalton found dog. All right, so we know where we're saving it. You can also look up here. This shows you the list of folders. It's called the path. So I'm in computer class Word chapter one. This is what I'm going to name it. And this is a type. It's a Word document and that's correct. We're going to go into that more later in class and hit save. And now you have created the found dog flyer.